Welcome to Bayesian Statistics. We're going to look here a little bit closer at the posterior distribution and see how the posterior distribution is influenced by the prior information. We're going to pick up where we left off in the last video, so if you haven't watched it, you might want to go back and look at it, because we're going to use the same example, uh, because I'm hoping this video will be rather short compared to the last few that have been a little bit longer. So again, suppose uh, lambda is going to be from a Poisson distribution, uh, or going to be the parameter in a Poisson distribution, and we're going to have it have a prior distribution of gamma, alpha, beta, and our random variables x1 through xn will come from this uh, Poisson lambda. The posterior distribution associated with this is lambda given the data is gamma, alpha plus the sum of the xi plus or not plus, but beta plus n. And we had some properties here. So mu here is the posterior mean. And we want to look at this a little bit closer and see how the posterior mean is influenced by the prior information and the data. So we that's what we want to look at here. So if we just do a little bit of algebra here, so we have mu given the data is expected value of lambda given the data. This is where we end up, well, this is the formula we had. Well, if I just play around here, n x bar is the sum of the xi, okay? Just, just by multiplying that, you'll see that that could be substituted in, and there's a reason I want to do this. Uh, so then what I can do is then just break it apart, right? This becomes uh, this piece plus this piece, right? If they have the common denominator, just like I combine them together, I can break them apart. And if I do this and then multiply this one by beta over beta, I get alpha beta, which is my prior mean. And over here I have x bar, which is the mean of the data. So I can look and break this apart here of what my posterior mean is partly prior information mean and the mean of the data. And this quantity here tells me how much of it is from the prior distribution, right? And notice that these two add up to one. So you can think of this as being like a percentage. And this beta over beta plus n is what's called a shrinkage factor. So it's showing how much the posterior mean is being shrunk towards the uh, prior mean. Okay, so uh, base or the from the data. So we have the data, and this, that mean is being shrunk towards the prior mean, uh, and it's just called shrinkage factor is what it's called. Okay, so and it tells you in a percentage wise how much that happens. So we can actually quantify the effect uh, or the influence of the prior distribution on the posterior mean. And this becomes uh, you really useful because somebody would say, well, you're using a Bayesian method and it requires a prior distribution. And that prior distribution has some influence on your answer. And you can go, yes, it does. And let me tell you how much it does. Um, so here, let's go back to our example uh, with the number of computer attacks per hour. Uh, with Alejandro, we had set uh, Lambda as Gamma 1812 and observed uh, eight observations, and we had the sum of the XI equal to 84. Uh, this gives us Lambda, given the data, is Gamma 10210. And here we just take the information that we have. Beta is 2. Uh, and then here, uh, beta is 2 again, and n, and we end up with 2 over 2 plus 8, which is 1 fifth, or about 0.2. So about 20% of the posterior inference, or mean, posterior mean, is influenced by the prior mean, or the prior distribution. So this gives you a way to quantify that. And if you stare at this, you can see here, n is the amount of information we had from the data. And beta is sort of a similar type idea here as how much information are we putting into this. Notice alpha doesn't show up here. So if we think about it this way, things could be slightly different. We can take this a little bit differently. So um, since uh, we're able to do this, we can notice that as n goes to infinity, the shrinkage factor is going to go to zero. Okay, so this thing is going to go to zero. So the more data I get, the prior mean doesn't really influence anything. Uh, it might it's way out in some decimal places, but for all practicality, it isn't going to influence things that much. And uh, it turns out that posterior distributions, even the ones we've came up with before for the Bernoulli trials, you can break it apart like this and find the shrinkage factor. And the reason I'm mentioning this is 
you you really want to know, or somebody really might want to know, how much influence did the prior distribution have on the posterior mean uh, versus the mean of the data? So it's kind of it's showing you where the compromise is in between the two. So it's pretty easy to calculate. It's just a ratio of the prior information over the total information in this case. Uh, and if you go and look at this in the uh, Bernoulli case, you're going to find a similar type formula, but we're not going to do that here. But this is where we're at, and uh, hopefully this has been useful for you when you are talking to somebody and asking about how much information did you actually put into the prior distribution. All right, so let's go on to prediction next. I know I said that was going to be next anyway, but I decided this could go in well right here because it's nice topic and the formulas were all right there so uh we're gonna move on to prediction and i'll see you in the next video